Juneteenth is officially a federal holiday. What do I think about that? You know, it's a sad fact that black folks have a bad habit of getting happy when there ain't really nothing to get happy about. And our enemies prey upon this bad habit. First, they set up a scenario where they take something that's of advantage to them and they get a few of their hand-picked bootlicks to get out there and clap like a bunch of trained seals and say, ooh, look how nice mass is being. And then a few of us go along with it because, well... That's just what some of us do. Some of us are just followers for following sake. And then the white media takes video of this and photographs of this and does some interviews with a few select Negroes. And then they hold this over our heads and say, see how happy you guys are getting about it. So if you object to it later, we're going to point out, gee, you guys, you're not happy with anything. It's a game that they play that too many of us fall for. So that's why the black media's got to stay on the case so that we don't relapse into all those bad habits, no matter how many bootlicking Negroes they try to use to sell us on it. Now, if you're not already subscribed to this YouTube channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button now, along with the bell icon, so you can be notified whenever a new video is posted. And if you're already subscribed, check and make sure that YouTube hasn't unsubscribed you. And of course, be sure to give the video a like, as well as share it on your social media. The white supremacists hate that. It was Dr. John Henrik Clark who taught us that if you start making demands of white supremacy, then it needs to be for something that requires the white supremacists to give up their power. But in truth, it's not really their power at all. It's what they stole from you, so you're not taking any of their power, you're reclaiming what's yours. Now, TBA has been saying for almost 15 years now that the power of white supremacy lies in the strength of its economy. So whenever the white supremacists come up to you pretending as if they've done something for you that's so great, first of all, they ain't going to do a damn thing for you. They'll do stuff to you, but not for you. And second of all, you need to be asking if these white supremacists, whatever it is that they think that they're bragging on themselves about, is it something that puts something tangible in your hands? If it's not, then it's just hot air. Juneteenth is a federal holiday. While I have no problem with it, the thing about it is it changes nothing for us. New York Times reluctantly reported that many states have recognized Juneteenth for decades, but only some observe it as an official holiday. The day is already celebrated in 47 states and the District of Columbia. Texas was the first state to observe Juneteenth as an official holiday starting in 1980. So there you have it. Texas was the first state to observe Juneteenth as an official holiday, and many states already recognize Juneteenth, though many of them don't make it an official state holiday, but even in D.C., they recognize it. So, what's the big hubbub then? Well, as the piece says, and I'm reading it out of order, so I hope that it makes the point have greater emphasis. After the protest for racial justice last year, dozens of companies moved to give employees the day off for Juneteenth, and the push for federal recognition as a paid holiday gained new momentum. As a paid holiday. Yeah. Another day to do a cookout for companies, and the federal government, by the way. Black folks are the ones who are wronged, black people are the ones who are owed, but you got the white government, white corporations saying, you know what, we are giving ourselves permission to take the day off and to pay ourselves for it. So for you half-wits out there who want to try to get jolly in the behind about this as if it's something new, sorry, it ain't. But let me ask you a question, because I know there's a few folks here who they think that somehow they're doing something great by letting their hearts go pitter-pat every time the white media tells them to. Let me ask you a question. How is making Juneteenth a national federal holiday any different from it not being a holiday at all? What do we as black people get out of this being a federal holiday? What's changed for us? What is going to happen now that wasn't happening until today? What's, what's the big deal? What's the big change? I want white supremacy to have to give up its power, not tokens. Because the biggest problem with tokens is that they're free. They can go ahead and do that and it doesn't hurt them. I want to put some pain on them. Now, of course, 
you had the signing ceremony slash photo op where you had no less than Jim Crow Joe being flanked by a bunch of other bootlicks and sycophants, including Kamala Harris, who ain't got a damn thing to do with Juneteenth. Her family brag in Jamaica bragging about how they were slave owners. And her mother in India, well, I think it's safe to say that the slavery experience in the U.S. totally had nothing to do with her. But Kamala Harris acting like it does. I would I would hope that she'll tell us all about how her ancestors languished in the killing fields of the American South. Maybe she can relate a story about how her ancestors heard the news about Juneteenth. I wonder if she'll go ahead and tell us about that. She's got a bullcrap story about the rest of her phony made-up black experience. I'm sure she's got one for this too, right? Because, I mean, she's just like us, right? But if a picture speaks a thousand words, this one speaks ten thousand putrid words. You got Negro Jim Clyburn, Cop Mala Harris... And, of course, Sheila Jackson Lee, who was supposed to be the main beneficiary of this. Amazing. You got Joe Biden, who this bastard has been spending his entire adult life persecuting black people. And now he's pretending as if, oh, I'm fine with this. I'm fine. With Give me a break. Now, what needs to be understood is both Democrats and Republicans voted for this. In the U.S. Senate, the bill passed unanimously. Now, the Republicans promised to stonewall all legislation that the Democrats put forward, but they supported this, including Mitch McConnell. And a lot of you who get your news and views from the white media and who allow the black bootlicks for the white media to inform your sensibilities because you're still trapped in the mental asylum of the old dead black media. Before you get ready to pretend to yourself, oh, this means something, the Republicans would never have supported this. Well, I got bad news for you. It was no less than Donald Trump who nine months ago during the 2020 campaign was pledging that he was going to make Juneteenth a federal holiday. All of that to pander for some black votes, just a sop to see if there were any slow-witted black folks who might decide to vote for him just because of that. So Trump already beat Biden to it nine months ago. And the orange man wasn't alone in his lip service for a Juneteenth holiday. You had all sorts of white supremacist trash, like white supremacist fiend Ben Shapiro, BS as I like to call him. He was also saying, yeah, I, I, I fully in favor of Juneteenth being a national holiday. It's absolutely, absolutely true. He can vitiate the evils of slavery, and we need to move along to something else. Hopefully after that we can stop talking about it. So the same white supremacist trash who talk about how, you know, black people really need to move on you know, and stop being stuck in the past. You know, these other groups, especially these immigrants, you know, like Shirley Jackson Lee and, and Kamala Harris and, and Candace Owens, they don't have a problem in America. So the rest of you guys, there must be something wrong with you. You got to get out of the past. Get out of the past. Get out of the past. Forget about the past. Here he is saying, yeah, a holiday for Juneteenth, the end of slavery in Texas. Well, uh, that's something that everybody should be fine with. Uh, yeah, we're not, we don't have an objection to that at all. Now, uh, ain't there something strange going on here? See, this is the reason why the Republicans went along with it, because Donald Trump understood that that doesn't threaten white supremacy. The Republicans understand that it doesn't threaten white supremacy. The Democrats understand that it doesn't. Now you can understand why there was complete bipartisan support for this. It's no threat to white supremacy. Oh, and just so you know, Juneteenth is this Saturday. Why, you've already got government offices and companies saying that they're going to be taking tomorrow off in observance of Juneteenth. Do you think it's a coincidence that Congress passed it at this time? The Republicans were the ones talking about Juneteenth as a national holiday just last year. See, white supremacy has no problem doing a U-turn on a dime if they have to. So long as it doesn't require them to give up their power, they'll say one thing on Monday and the exact opposite on Tuesday. Whatever's politically expedient to them. And you notice how the Democrats didn't call them out about this. And your leftist media, your white left-hand media, they're not doing that either. No, 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 because it's a matter of it would, it would look bad if they pointed out, well, there were Republicans who were already on to this. Hmm, kind of smells like a trick bag, don't it? Biden was in Europe most of this week, a trip that he had been planning for months long before this, might I add, and yet 
he made sure to be right back in the U.S. in plenty of time to sign this as soon as it came off of the House floor. As soon as both houses of Congress made sure to, to pass this into law, well, here comes Jim Crow Joe with his pen, as if he had anticipated this. As if he knew that no matter what he planned to do in Europe months ago when they made these arrangements, no matter what he was planning for his trip in Europe, make sure that you're back in the U.S. a few days before Juneteenth, because you don't want to miss this signing opportunity. You don't want to miss this photo op. So make sure you're back in plenty of time because there's going to be some legislation for you to sign. Yeah, as if he knew this was going down. This was some political theater being put on for our benefit. They've been planning this for a while now. This didn't just pass both houses of Congress by coincidence at this time. It was supposed to pass at this time. Amazing how gridlock goes away when both of the parties want it to. So long as it doesn't punish the white supremacists and does not give us our tangibles, then it suddenly becomes doable. Oh, now all of a sudden Mitch McConnell, he forgot all about that. Our first priorities make sure that no legislation gets through. Isn't bad, Mr. No, our, that's our top priority. All of a sudden he forgot all about that. Biden's done his asinine photo op and made sure that Kamala Harris and that Sheila Jackson Lee were there because this is supposed to make sure that they build up their credentials, especially Sheila Jackson Lee. I mean, look at what she put on her Twitter today. Getting the first pin. Yeah, she's going to be there to get her credit. No, the first pin, I, I want that. The first pin belongs to me. This is me. This is about me and my photo op. Take a picture of me. Take some photos, damn it. And I want my interviews afterwards. Getting the first pin. She ain't even the woman who was most responsible for this. Miss Opal Lee was the one who was responsible for it. She's the gray-haired woman in the picture in the white. But Sheila Jackson Lee getting the first pin. Yeah, immigrant bootlicks who are carrying water, they should get the first pin. Overwhelmed for all those we lost through the history of slavery. What's this we crap? Sheila Jackson Lee's folks didn't get here till like the 19 freaking 60s or so. For all those we lost through slavery. No, she, she didn't lose anybody in slavery. She wants to talk about Jamaica. She can do that. But the United States, that ain't her history. But here she is trying to talk as if, oh, yep, I was there too. That was all about me too. I, I, we, my folks were there too. The hell they were. But this is the con game that today's little display is meant to prop up. Sheila Jackson Lee, she's acting as if, oh, this is all the result of her effort and what she did. She is a freaking parasite. Looking for anything of ours that she can try to glom onto and suck the life right out of. The damned insult. One of the immigrants who white supremacy decides is going to set certain things aside for. And she's trying to take credit for our accomplishments, our history, what we have survived and overcome and persevered. Yeah, if you're someone who's spineless like Sheila Jackson Lee, it makes sense that she want to stand beside people far better than herself. All those we lost through the history of slavery. Well, great. In that case, then she can go ahead and tell us what plantation in the American South her ancestors were imprisoned at. She can go ahead and give us the names of her ancestors who got out of slavery. What, what, what did Sheila Jackson Lee's folks say when slavery ended? Where were they when slavery ended? Where were they when the news came? I mean, she's supposed to be representing Texas, right? I'm a representative from Texas and my constituents. Well, in that case, then she can go ahead and tell us what her ancestors' reaction was when news of Juneteenth came down to them. After all, they were in Texas at the time, right? They weren't still in Jamaica, right? Right? The damned freaking insult of this. Getting the first pen. Yep, this is all about me. This is all about me. This is our history. Our history. Even if I wasn't here for it, it's still our history. Even if I didn't have a damn thing to do with it, I'm still going to try to appropriate whatever moral authority from this that I can for myself. And I'm still going to run my ignorant mouth regardless. But you got Sheila Jackson Lee, a child of Jamaican immigrants, who had nothing to do 
with the slavery experience in the United States. You got Kamala Harris, whose family bragged about being slave owners. And neither side of her family has anything to do with it either. And yet these two, they out front for that photo op. Oh, they're not going to be beat on that one. You better have us in the picture. We're going to get our damn credit. We're going to be here. We ain't got nothing to do with it. But we're trying to somehow, we're trying to somehow fool you into thinking that we some, have something to do with this when they ain't got a damn thing to do with it. Neither Sheila Jackson Lee nor Kamala Harris has a damn thing to do with what happened to our ancestors in the killing fields of the American South. It is an abomination and a perversion to take this day that neither one of them had a damn thing to do with fighting for. You take individuals who come from a group of privileged immigrants who white supremacy has done everything it can to try to elevate them over us and try to leapfrog them over us. And here they are pretending as if somehow, well, they're going to just stand next to us and somehow they're going to have our moral legitimacy by osmosis, I suppose. This is no different than that crap that Alexandria Ocasio horseface keeps saying. If you're going to be doing any sort of reparations for black people, you better include Latinos, too. This happens to be the PR equivalent of the same con game. Oh, if you got these black folks who actually came out of slavery in the U.S., if they're getting any sort of shine for themselves, well, you better make sure that the immigrants are there, too. You better make sure we're included, too. Uh, yeah, Kamala Harris goes ahead and spits out a couple of empty words. Sheila Jackson Lee's talking about what Juneteenth means to her. Her ancestors weren't even here at the time. That stuff happened long before her folks came over on whatever boat or plane they showed up on. She ain't got a damn thing to do with it. What Juneteenth means to me. Yeah, what it means is you're going to be out here trying to finesse some votes for yourself, Sheila Jackson Lee. That's all it means for you. And Jim Crow Joe who has taken just a few minutes away from mass incarcerating black people and taking absolutely, just with no awareness whatsoever, signing this as if somehow he hadn't had anything to do with the oppression of black folks after slavery. It seems like all these bastards are trying to use our history as a springboard for their own personal benefit. So you see why it is that while I do think that Juneteenth, I have no problem with it being a holiday, that's fine. But the thing is, you better understand what this really is. Oh, yeah, Biden's going to be sitting here with these hand-picked bootlicks behind him saying, hey, the massa Biden, he like the second coming of Abe Lincoln. Well, I do agree with that. Both Biden and Lincoln were Yankee racists who didn't give a damn about black people. So, OK, I guess there is some truth in advertising there. By the way, you know, they gave Dr. King a holiday, too, and... Just out of curiosity, how did that improve the lot of black folks? Understand, white supremacy has no problem with empty gestures. In fact, that's their favorite ploy. But on cue, you got the black misleaders telling us that this is big. This is some kind of victory for us. Well, as Dr. John Henry Clark said when talking about the Million Man March, it is an accomplishment. But for who and for what? Dirtbag political opportunists like Negro Jim Clyburn and political parasites like Sheila Jackson Lee and Kamala Harris. This is who it's an accomplishment for. They're trying to find a way to graft themselves onto our history, not for the sake of doing us any good. They're trying to see if they can find a way to slice off for themselves some of the unquestionable legitimacy that we represent. Kamala Harris and Sheila Jackson Lee, they look in the mirror and what they see is they see frauds. They look in the mirror and they see two individuals who they could not possibly be part of our story. They didn't have the steel for it. They see everything that we've been through, what we've survived, what we overcame. They see our unique history, unique in the history of the world. And they wish that they could be a part of it. Oh, they, they wish that they could be a part of looking at it and seeing what kind of grit that we've got. What kind of steel in our spines we have. And they look at themselves and they know that they don't have it and will never have it. Sheila Jackson Lee had a choice. She could either stand up her ancestral homeland or she could flee from it. Her family chose to flee. Kamala Harris, same thing trying to call themselves, somehow associating themselves with us. 
as if these Johnny come latelys who showed up on some sort of immigrant visa a few years ago, somehow they've got something to do with us and we've been here from day one. This is an abomination going on here. But you got some Negroes applauding for it and nobody calling them out on it. Family, you better start learning to recognize a trick bag when you see one. If it's not tangibles, then it's not satisfactory. Only the black bootlick class thinks that this is some sort of great victory. The clowns who make their daily bread cheering for whatever their white supremacist paymasters tell them to cheer for. Oh, this has been in the works for a while. No less than Roly Poly's raggedy behind was talking about this back in February. And you know, that's particularly important to me to note because February was the exact same time that the white media's bootlicks were lying and saying that Biden was going to get ready to meet with Ice Cube. Remember that back in February? I've reminded you of it a few times. Still waiting for that to happen, by the way. Biden still hasn't gotten around to talking with Ice Cube yet, and neither has Kamala Harris. But back in February, when they were perpetrating that fraud, making a media blitz in the hopes that they would pacify some black folks and then let it fall down the memory hole, let's go ahead and let it die, the issue die a natural death. But in February, while they were pushing that lie that Biden was ever going to meet with Ice Cube, oh, any moment now, he going to do it any moment now. At that exact same time, Roly Poly was saying, Juneteenth holiday, because I ain't had enough cookouts yet. That's what was going on with these clowns. So that's what you see. Donald Trump, Roly Poly Martin, Kamala Harris, Sheila Jackson Lee, and Jim Crow Joe. At some point, you're supposed to recognize, there, wait a minute, there's a program at work here. Just a rogues gallery of every anti-black racist and bootlick that you can imagine. Something's going on here. These guys have never done a damn thing to help black people, but they're sitting here trying to push this. Now, what kind of con game are they running? They're laying the groundwork. Or so they hope. This is, in large part, an effort to credentialize Sheila Jackson Lee and Kamala Harris. But I'm going to focus on Sheila Jackson Lee just for a moment. Juneteenth commemorates an atrocity that took place in Texas. And that's where Sheila Jackson Lee's from. That's the area that she's misrepresenting. And while she's going to pretend as if she's so concerned about this, the heifer is not going to tell anybody. She ain't going to make it a point to point out to him, well, you know what, guys? My folks are from Jamaica. I ain't got a damn thing to do with Juneteenth. None of my folks went through that. It means nothing to me. But instead, it's a matter of you got these invasion of the black identity snatchers is what this is. They're trying to walk in the door and pretend as if, oh, we've been with you guys the whole freaking time. And that way, when they start spewing their bullcrap about how black people's concerns are no different and no better and no more pressing than immigrants like Sheila Jackson Lee and Kamala Harris. Well, then they'll also point out why you can't question my credentials on that. Why I helped to get Juneteenth made to a national holiday and that'll be enough for you niggers. So while the immigrants are going to be getting tangibles, you guys get a you guys get to have a a day that you can talk about when white folks extended your slavery past even their own illegal expiration date. There's not going to be any tangibles for you, but though you guys can sit around and you can wax poetic as you reminisce about a particular day 150 years ago. You can go ahead. That, that'll be what you guys get. It is wrong that Sheila Jackson Lee can have any sort of uh, have any sort of credit for something that has nothing to do with her whatsoever. It is wrong that she played this game and she not be made to pay a price for it. Because by allowing this snake in the grass to slither her way into our history and try to find some way that she can leech off of our history that she had nothing to do with it, what they're doing is they're using her as a stalking horse to try to blur the lines but the lines are not going to be blurred in a way that advantage us. It's meant to blur the lines so that everybody else can shoehorn themselves and swing off of, into our history and swing off the coattails of our suffering. That's what this is meant to do. It's meant to give entree to immigrants and whomever else so that Sheila Jackson Lee will claim to be our mouthpiece 
as she says, and everybody else, based on sexual lifestyle or based on national origin or based on whether or not you got ovaries or what have you, she's going to be sitting there basically claiming that that's the same as what we went through because she says so. Oh, yeah, she, this is supposed to be setting her up to do that. That's what this is. It's meant to credentialize her for that purpose. And all you morons out there who are wondering whatever happened to H.R. 40, whatever happened to your police accountability commission, this is what happened to it. Nothing that's going to punish white supremacy, nothing that is going to get you the tangibles you're owed. But instead, here's a holiday so that white employees can have a paid day off. This woman ain't done a damn thing for black folks. She's only done plenty for herself, though. The white media has never been interested in Sheila Jackson Lee before now, but as we started putting pressure on her and exposing her and pointing out that the black congressional caucus is basically an immigrant congressional caucus concerned with the issues of immigrants, but they have nothing but disdain and contempt for us, the white media understands that their little tool has taken some damage. So they're trying to find a way to patch up some of those holes that we've blown in her credibility. We got to manufacture some good headlines for her. We got to manufacture some laudatory headlines for her. We'll have her stand here claim that she's doing stuff for black folks. That way, hopefully, uh, just a few less Negroes will ask any questions about all the stuff that she's not doing for us. We'll pretend as if she's doing something for black folks so that hopefully a few less black people will ask questions. Why isn't she getting us our tangibles? If ever there was a platform and a time for her to point out that reparations are needed, yeah, but she's lost some of her enthusiasm for reparations, haven't you noticed? A, because you got the black grassroots pushing the issues, so she can no longer act as white supremacy shock absorber. She no longer gets to act as their cutout so they can send her out there and say, don't worry, I'm going to go ahead and tell these white folks all about this reparations. Y'all just go home now. Don't be causing no trouble. Don't be putting no pressure on Massa now. I'll take care of it. She can't play that game anymore. Nobody's going to listen to her. So because of that, because she doesn't have the ability to play the pretend to be for reparations when you're really against it game. Well, what's happening now is they're trying to give her a new little hustle that she's going to run. But you would think that with the eyes of the white media all over this, with all the attention it was getting today, this would be the perfect time for Sheila Jackson Lee, the immigrant who had no experience in American slavery whatsoever, neither her nor her ancestors did. You would think this would be a good time for her, the perfect time for her to point out, look what happened to black folks. They were being exploited after the end of slavery, still held in bondage afterwards. And this is why we need reparations. But she didn't say a damn word about it. No, Sheila Jackson Lee, she wasn't using this as a platform to push for reparations because the jig is up on that one. She already understands damn well. It's being made clear to everybody. Oh, there's going to be reparations checks cut, but Sheila Jackson Lee ain't getting one. She ain't part of it. That's the reason why she decided she was going to be very careful what she said today. No, she's not going to be telling everybody, you know what? My family came here after all this stuff was over. Hell, we showed up around the time of the civil rights movement. So Juneteenth ain't got nothing to do with me. The killing fields of the American South ain't got nothing to do with me. Convict leasing ain't had nothing to do with me. Lynchings, nothing to do with me. I, my family, we had no, no experience in that whatsoever. Hell, we showed up around the same time as the boat people from Vietnam so and Cambodia. So, you know, they ain't got nothing to do with us. I have nothing to do with that. She ain't playing that game. No, she's trying to, to blur the lines. She's trying to obliterate it so that then she can say whatever she wants and hopefully not too many people will say boo about it. So all you morons who may be lurking on my channel still holding a candle that Sheila Jackson Lee was going to step up for reparations at some point, she had a perfect opportunity to do it today and didn't say jack perfect opportunity to point out, hey, black folks have been exploited after slavery all the way up to the present. Now we need to get moving on H.R. 40. She didn't say nothing about that. Instead, it's let us wax poetic and remember Juneteenth. Oh, doesn't that make you feel better? There's a, a holiday for Juneteenth. Doesn't that make you feel better? Don't you feel better? Don't you feel, 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 I feel your pain. Don't you feel better now? Now, again, before any of the slow coast called themselves bombing into the comments section, 
I've got nothing against a Juneteenth holiday. I'm fine with it. In fact, I'm glad that it passed, if for no other reason than to watch some of the far-right extremists, which seems to be all of them, to watch these guys go into conniptions about it. I get a good chuckle out of that, and it's nice to watch these guys griping and complaining, and, you know, it, it irritates them, but that's all it does. It irritates them. I want to hurt the bastards. I want them to be completely and thoroughly crushed and defeated. This doesn't do that. It doesn't even move us in that direction. Juneteenth is certainly worthy of a national holiday. This is not a bad thing that Juneteenth's a holiday, but the problem happens to be the people who are behind it. They're using this for something else. This was meant to one part pacify us, another part to credentialize a bunch of immigrant front men, or front women as the case may be. The entire point behind this was for it to rise and fall in a single day, and it goes no farther than this. This is not meant to be a step on the road to reparations. Sheila Jackson Lee made that very clear, didn't say a damn word about it. Didn't say, now it's time to talk about reparations. This is just one example of a countless string of atrocities against black people and all this after the alleged end of chattel slavery. No, today's token gesture was meant to be a dead end. This is a trial balloon. They want to see if it flies or not. Will the black media shooting it down? When you see the white media praising some Negro you never heard of and promoting that black, what that black person is saying, or at least they're sitting there pretending to promote it. You see that there's some black person who's saying something, especially about race, and the white media is not attacking them, not throwing shade at them, not trying to discredit or to discount what they're saying, not calling it controversial. That should be three red flags that they're playing an angle and it's against us. You didn't see the white media using the word controversial to describe Juneteenth. They weren't saying controversial. They weren't casting aspersions on any of the people putting this forward. Oh yeah, the white media in one of their rare displays of actually not taking an opportunity to trash black folks directly, but the only reason that they do that is because they're trying to prop up some sort of con game. So Juneteenth is now a federal holiday. As Kamala Harris was whining, it's a day to take stock, a day to remember. Oh, we're going to remember, all right. We're going to remember that we still do not have what we are owed. We're going to remember the white supremacies still vainly trying to prop up its hand-picked bootlicks, who have nothing to do with our struggle, by the way and trying to find a way to legitimize them off of our history and play a fraud like that. Oh, we're going to remember that. All right, that's the part that we're going to remember.